So Chris, for Yakov disease sits within the family um, of diseases known as prion diseases, and they're also known as transmissible spongiform encephalopathies. And this is a group of neurodegenerative disorders which has the unusual feature of being transmissible. Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease is a rare disorder. It's probably around the one to two million population per year. We recognise three major subgroups or four. Um, the first being sporadic, which occurs without clear explanation, typically in people 65 to 75 years of age. Then there's a group that are inherited genetic CJD, often a, a little younger. And then there's a much less common group, um, we call them iatrogenic, meaning they've acquired their disease through transmission, inadvertent transmission from people usually undergoing a procedure or treatment where contaminated material was introduced into that person. And the median survival for someone with sporadic CGRD is only about four to five months, and that's from onset of first symptoms to death. So they're very progressive, very different to illnesses like Parkinson's disease, typical Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease. And so people, in addition to having some awareness of impairment of thinking or memory, um, often they have some behavioural change and there may be some degree of mood change with it, so they may become a bit anxious or agitated. And typically they have difficulties with movement, so their balance may be compromised and they may have less coordination of their arms and legs. And they can also have these spontaneous jerks called myoclonus. And that triad of cognitive decline with gross motor impairment and, and myoclonus is very typical and that tempo of progression. So that combination is, is highly suggested. So the Australian National Crossfire Yarkov Disease Registry was um, created in response to the deaths of four people that most likely developed Kreutzfeldt Jakob disease from treatment with contaminated pituitary hormones. And these four women um, were treated for infertility and they died. I think two or three of them actually did have post-mortem examination and proof. And the other person in that context of being treated with the pituitary hormones, developing symptoms around the same time and dying with typical clinical features was thought to be CJD. Well, we're hoping that we will get disease-modifying treatments that meaningfully stop progression. The pressure will be to have a diagnosis early enough before a lot of brain damage has occurred so that the prolongation of life is meaningful rather than someone being severely disabled with a longer life. We actually catch them earlier and treat them. The holy grail of treatment will be um, being able to actually arrest progression and then maybe in time there will be restorative treatments developed, not just for CJD, but for Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, that can actually maybe bring about more meaningful recovery if you've been able to stop progression of disease. So that's a long way down the track. Initially, it's trying to catch the illness early, start treatment to stop it getting worse or at least slow its progression. Um, they're the hopeful aim in the near future.